What's up, Matt fans? I haven't told a joke in a while, so in honor of Sweater Fridays, here's a joke. Calculator? No. Calcul now. Get it? Calculator? Ah, I don't have time for later. We're gonna do it right now. Badoom. All right. I want to learn about quadrantal angles and how unit circles can help me. So of course. You saw the intro to unit circles already. You know everything you need to know. You know that the radius is one, and you know how to use it, kind of. You know it helps you to find sine, cosine, and tangent. And now I want to learn what a quadrantal angle is. If, if you don't know, well, think about this. Um, 90 degrees, put it on a graph. Where would 90 degrees, how would 90 degrees look on a graph? So you already know that you got your initial side, and you got your counterclockwise, open up to 90 degrees, terminal side. So here's my 90 degree angle. How would that look on a graph? Boom, right there. So remember zero degrees would be right on the x-axis. 90 degrees would be shooting straight up. Um, 180 degrees opens into a straight angle. So 180 would be here. 270 is down here. And if I, oh wow. And if I continued, uh, 360 lands in the same place as zero, so that makes it, what are they, what was that called? Did we learn something? Coterminal, all right? Those are our quadrantal angles. Those are the angles that don't lie in any particular quadrant. So remember this, quadrant one, two, three, or four. Each quadrant has its own properties, but quadrantal angles are a little bit special because they lie right on the axis itself instead of a quadrant. So zero is quadrantal, 90 is quadrantal, so is 270, so is uh, 180. And then I could just keep adding 90 forever. So I could say 360, and then I could add 90 to 360 and get uh, 450, and I can keep going around and around. But once I know these, it just repeats, the pattern repeats. That's what's cool about trigonometry, patterns repeat. So I need to know the sine of zero degrees, and I learned that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which means I need a triangle. But zero degrees would make it closed, which means there is no triangle. So how do I do that? Well, that's why this is helpful. So remember what I said about a unit circle. If you have a point on a unit circle, let's say here, point P, and I don't know the coordinates of point P, we called it X, Y. But that's no longer helpful. Remember I did like this, and I drew a right triangle, boom, right there, and we decided that the radius is one, and we decided that opposite would be y, the vertical line is y and the horizontal is x. So y over one is the same as opposite over hypotenuse, so that's sine. So then we decided that y is really the sine of theta, if this is my theta right here. And of course, by that logic, uh, cosine theta is the x value. So I've already explained that in the intro to unit circles. Now I wanna use that. So right here, my point P would be right on the x-axis if I'm dealing with a zero degree angle. So I don't need that triangle there. But the rules stay the same. So no more point P over there, that's not helpful. Point P is right on the x-axis right here. That's a very specific point. So what I'm doing is my initial side is on the x-axis, my terminal side is also on the x-axis. I hit my point P. What is that point? What are the coordinates? They are right here. That's one comma zero. If you remember how to graph points, it's x comma y. So on the x-axis is one, but on the y-axis I didn't go up or down, so that's one comma zero. So guess what? Now I just match it up. That makes the cosine is one and the sine is zero. So the sine of zero is zero, and the cosine of zero is one. Now, tangent, Check this out. Remember when I just had that triangle there? And I can, I can draw it right here for you. If you have a triangle, and this is a right angle, and this is theta over here, and I said the hypotenuse was one in a unit circle, and I said the opposite was y and the adjacent was x, what's tangent of theta? It's defined as opposite over adjacent, right? So Katoa, so that's y over x. But we already said we're not using y and x anymore. We're using cosine and sine. So y is defined as sine and x is defined as cosine. So now when I refer to tan of theta, I can find it by doing the sine divided by the cosine. So guess what? That's a new rule. Tangent theta 
is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Remember that. And that brings me to my second joke. If you're going outside and you see that on someone's skin, you say, hey, nice tan. Get it? Nice tan. Badoom. All right. So if I need the tangent of zero, I'm going to just do sine divided by cosine. That's zero divided by one and zero divided by one and zero divided by anything, zero. So there you go. Your first three functions or your third, first three ratios. Now I want to do the same thing for 90. So this time, 90 we said was pointing up. So my point P would be right here on the unit circle. What are the coordinates of point P this time? Well, that is uh, zero, because I didn't go anywhere on the X, but I went up to one. So that's zero comma one. So everything switches here. Sine is the Y value, so that's one. Cosine is the X value, so that's zero. And tangent is sine over cosine, is one divided by zero. Hopefully you know you're not allowed to divide by zero, that makes a fraction undefined. So the answer to tangent of 90 is undefined. Type it in the calculator, type it in the calcul now, and you'll see, uh, it's gonna say error. Error means undefined, I'm actually gonna put infinity. Infinity to represent undefined. So here are my next three. Here are my first three. Guess what? We're gonna do it for 270, we're gonna do it for 180. Try it on your own, pause it, and then check your answers. So I'm gonna create some space, and let's see if we can do it for 270 and 180. So again, where's point P? If I'm looking at 180, I'm looking at a straight angle, right? This represents theta. So my terminal side is here, boom, and what are the coordinates of that point? That's easy. That's negative one zero. And for later, when I'm looking at um, 270, my theta would open from zero all the way to 270 like that. What are my coordinates at point P here? Uh, this point would be zero, negative one. So similar to what I already did. Sine 180, cosine 180, Tangent 180. Of course, I'm in degrees. Make sure you are also in degrees mentally and on your calculator. Um, so, the sine of 180 would be the y coordinate, that's 0. Cosine would be the x coordinate, that's negative 1. And then 0 over negative 1 is 0. All right, same thing. Sine 270, cosine, and tangent. Sine, negative one. Cosine, zero. Tangent, ah, don't know, all right? And guess what, you can do the same thing for 360 and your answers better match the answers for zero. So there you go. Um, any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching, see ya.